It might have been all you know, three of us kind of cooling with. Um, but we thought it would be great because the, this, this had a couple, they, they had beautiful sets of silverware and tableware in fancy china. And so what we did is we set the table and then we, uh, we decided that we would put me sitting at the table but somehow obviously dead. And as I was doing my makeup, Neil said, I've got an idea. And he came over and he took my eyeliner and he painted eyes on my eyelids. So that when I closed my eyes, I had these really scary looking zombie eyes. Um, I, of course, couldn't see it. Because, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, so when you, look, when you look at the picture, that's what you see. You see, uh, it's kind of, Small, but it's this one on the left. Um, and it's just a dark photo of me sitting at this candlelit, wonderfully set table, looking despondent. And this is what Noah is going with it. Uh, we dine together every night facing each other across the dinner table. I painted her eyes on myself. The closed eyes disturbed me. I worried she was bored or asleep. We dined together every night. I talked to her about the world, not past it all. She did not pass anything. I painted her eyes on myself. The last time she spoke, it was to complain about the food. It was too bitter, and she disliked the mushrooms. We dined together every night. That was long ago. She no longer ages. Between meals, I keep her covered with a sheet. We dined together every night. I painted her eyes on myself. I should, um, I should tell the story of this photo, because I don't know if people know it. So, can you hold up? I don't know how well you can see it. You want to talk about it better. It's a picture of, a, it's a river, a little creek. It's very, very shallow. The water comes up to about here. And um, there's a dead metal palmer floating in uh, wrapped in plastic much like Laura Palmer. Uh, and those three little girls, they're about eight, ten, and twelve, standing around the courts, and one is poking her with a stick. And um, this photo was taken on, when I was on tour, either right before or right after um, this, this, this sort of group thing with me and Neil and Kyle. And these three girls, are actually a band uh, from the state called Smoosh. And um, they were opening up on an entire tour for the drum Hall. And my assistant Beth was on tour with us and was taking occasional dead photos for the book. And this was in Austin, Texas, before the concert one night. We, we saw that there was a bridge with this great creek below, and Beth and I asked the girls if they would want to be in the photograph poking me with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was the story behind this one, and then it was, it was kind of up to me all for the story. I decided it would be fun to set it in English. From the private diary of Maya Khan, June 2nd. We had blackberry jam and scones for tea. Anthea said we should go up to the ballroom and pretend we were at a crowded ball with gowns and invitations and ambassadors, but Chloe said please no, and she just wanted to go for a walk by the lake. So we did. At first we thought it was a swan, or perhaps a dress, 
that had blown off the clothesline and into the water. We saw the white. It's a lady, said Chloe. She is the oldest of us, and says this means she has the sharpest eyes. We thought she was alive. I mean, I did. I thought she was thinking. And she said she thought she was alive too. Chloe said she knew she was dead all along. We walked out a little way and pushed her back to the shore with sticks. Like a toy boat. I said, it's Miss Palmer. And she said that the strains of being a governess must have got to her with all the press and grammar and everything. And she stated that Miss Palmer had succumbed to brain fever. Chloe <laughs> didn't say anything at all. Not then. The bruises on Miss Palmer's neck were the colour of blackberry jam. Then we went up the hill to the house to tell people what we had found. When we were waiting to tell them, Chloe said she saw Miss Palmer kissing someone in the scullery two nights ago. Angie and I asked her who it was, but she said she did not know the gentleman, though we caught a glimpse. We all agreed that a governess who died for love is a most romantic thing. But who will teach us piano forte and sewing and composition now? We had both dates for supper and then to bed. Angie and I listened to Chloe crying quietly in her bed, and eventually she stopped crying. 